Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the Monday edition here of Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for being with us. We have a lot of things to cover today. So if you can, reach over, get your Bible, and join me. Mine is open to two places. One is the last chapter of the book of Daniel. The other is Matthew chapter 24. If you can be in only one place, just go to Matthew chapter 24, please. I'll be reading from both of those here in just a moment. Try to imagine this if you can. Try to imagine an entire world without a single Christian in it. That means there's no believers in all of North America, South America, none in Asia, Europe, India, no believers anywhere. Well, someday, my listening friend, that is actually going to be the case. At the rapture of the church, all true believers will be caught away. Oh, (laughs) to be sure, there will be professing believers and a lot of religious people still on earth, but not one single genuine child of God. With this catching up of the believers, the next event on the prophetic calendar here on earth is what's called the tribulation period. And this tribulation period is going to be our focus this week as we continue our series of broadcasts dealing with prophetic events as we found in the Word of God. Now today, I want to answer two questions. One is this, why do we call this era on earth the tribulation period? And secondly, what is its purpose? What's the purpose for the tribulation period? Let's see how far we can get in answering those questions today directly from the Word of God. Get your Bible out. Get something on which you can jot some notes. Let's be faithful Bible students together. Already you know that this broadcast, as my announcer has already said, is sponsored by a gospel tract organization. It's called Bible Tracts Incorporated. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. We're referring to an evangelism tool. It's a tool that's very powerful. You can hand it out quickly. You can hand it out to people with whom you cannot verbally tell the gospel, but boy, it does it ever, share the gospel clearly, and we want to put a sample packet of our gospel tracts in your hand. That means one each of all of our English gospel tracts. There's 40 tracts, 41 tracts in the sample packet. One of them is this one in my hand right now entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. Boy, oh boy, I wish I had a nickel for every time I've heard somebody say that they were hoping to get to heaven because they were trying to obey the Ten Commandments. When I quizzed them, they openly agreed that no, they had not kept all of them, but they thought they'd done pretty good. Some people, many people are confused thinking that to get to heaven, I've got to keep the Ten Commandments as if that's God's standard on how a person gets in. But it's not. The purpose of the Ten Commandments is to show us how sinful we are and why we need a Savior and salvation is by grace, God's goodness and mercy to us. And that's exactly how this gospel tract, again titled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments, it will lay out these things. Number one, what the purpose of the Ten Commandments are. Number two, that you have fallen short of keeping them. And number three, you're guilty because you have failed. I have failed to keep them, but then it leads into God's antidote for our wickedness and sinfulness. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary. It's a great gospel tool. Many people have come to Christ after reading this one. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do that, please. You can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.com. 
BibleTracksInc.org. I spelled tracks a moment ago, BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open, first of all, Daniel chapter 12, just verse 1 says this, Daniel 12, 1, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, that's the Jewish people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Stop right there. I'm going over now to Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to begin to read at verse 5, Matthew 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. And one more verse, verse 20 one says this, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this same time, no, nor ever shall be. That's where we're going to stop reading there for today. Now, as we look at the subject of the tribulation period, as we just read here, it is called the tribulation time by Jesus here. Jesus is speaking in Matthew 24. Over in Daniel 12, there it was called a time of trouble. There's a lot of other places in the scripture where the words, these two words that are that day, those are the two words that day are used to identify the tribulation period. So, as to my first question, why in the world do we call this coming time called the tribulation period? Why do we call it that? The answer is because the Bible uses that term. Now, no one has to tell you that all through human history, there's been a lot of troublesome times. The American Civil War was certainly a troublesome time, but primarily only for the people here in the United States. World War I and II were troublesome times, and for a lot more people. But if your Bible is open, look again at Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. There is a unique time of trouble coming, unlike any other time. In the middle of verse 1, we're going to read these words. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even till that same time. So, as awful as the world wars were and some other major troubling events have been on our planet, there is a future time coming that is basically off the charts as to its awfulness and its horrors that will be part of it. Well, that's answer one. Why do we call it the tribulation period? My second question was this. What is the purpose of the tribulation period? What's it for? Well, the answers to this question are relatively few. I'm going to list some here today and just focus on one of them. I'll get to the others along the way, Lord willing. But here are the key reasons for the tribulation period as I find it in the Word of God. Reason number one is this. It's to complete God's work with the nation of Israel, to complete that work If I were to turn back to Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24, we'd find these words. I'm reading now. Daniel 9, 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Well, Daniel's people were the Jewish people. And upon the holy city, which is Jerusalem. And here's why. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for the iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. There's more to the verse. I'm going to stop, though, right there. In the following verses there in Daniel 9, we were going to see, we would find out that the last of these 70 weeks is one that's referred to as or or identified with the tribulation period. Verse 26 and following speaks about the Antichrist and wars and desolations and so on. So the first purpose of the tribulation is for God to complete his work with the Jewish people and identify his faithful remnant. The second reason and purpose for the tribulation period is this, to visit God's wrath upon wicked Gentiles. 
I have this reference here. Just jot it down. The reference is Isaiah 13, verses 10 and 11. I'm going to read parts of them here in just a moment. But verse 10 of Isaiah 13, 10 says this, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Now, these are details we see come to pass as we get into the book of the Revelation. But then in Isaiah 13, verse 11, and I'm reading again, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Now, the culmination of God judging the world for their sin is called the battle of Armageddon. The third purpose of the tribulation period is to bring the elect of Israel to repentance. Just jot a reference down. It's Hosea chapter 5, verse 14 and following. But I want to get to my fourth purpose, my last one here. The fourth purpose for the tribulation period is this, to declare the gospel of the kingdom to all the world. Again, I'm back in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 says this, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It is very likely that you have heard about that number 144,000 people that's mentioned a couple of times in the book of the Revelation. These are Jewish people from all the 12 tribes, and they're going to be martyred in the tribulation period. But there's also a large number of Gentiles who are going to believe in Jesus during the tribulation period, and many of these folk will also die during the tribulation period. The book of the Revelation also speaks of two very powerful preachers during the tribulation period. These guys are martyred, but they are resurrected in the sight of the whole world. Now, all of these people have heard the gospel and received it, and they've been preaching the gospel of Christ. They believed it, and they were preaching it. Their gospel message is our gospel message, the same one, but theirs ends this way. Jesus is coming real soon to return to rule and reign on the earth. He's going to set up an earthly kingdom. Thus, the gospel is called the gospel of the kingdom. Now, I have said a lot here in a short period of time, but beloved, We who know Christ today, we have been called to tell the gospel to the whole world. That's our commission. But right now, you probably have already heard that half of our present generation has never heard the gospel. Half of those people have never heard the name of Jesus. Now, God is going to make sure during the tribulation period to complete what we are not fully doing today. He is going to make sure the whole world, through the declaration of the gospel and his mighty acts of power and judgment, the world will know there's a God in heaven. He is holy and they are not. Some of them will believe, but some of them will basically put their fist in the air at God and say, I will not have this man reign over me. Friend, will you let Christ be your Lord and Savior, your Lord, your boss, your Savior, to take your sin away. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.